Welcome to Blackboard Discussion on Monopolistic Competition number two. Let's consider the shirt market. Now, the idea is to think of a market that might be monopolistic competition, some competitive elements and some monopolistic elements. The first thing to think of is the entry and exit. Well, you know, it's kind of difficult to enter the shirt making business, but not too difficult. It's not exactly a monopoly. You do need some capital, some money. There might be some economies of scale. The idea is that entry and exit isn't quite as hard as monopoly, but isn't quite as easy as pure competition. Okay, let's go back to the shirt market now. When we draw the market for shirts and we're using the monopolistic competition market, we draw a kind of flatter demand curve, a marginal revenue curve like this, an marginal cost curve like this. Now this diagram shouldn't be too excitingly new because it looks very much, if not identical, to the monopoly diagram. Average total cost, price, quantity. This, just like any other one, you look at it and you say, okay, here's where they meet. That's where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And that gives us the quantity of shirts. This is shirt company A. And if we look at this, they're going to make 200 shirts. They're going to come up here, sell these shirts for this price determined by the demand. We'll say $25. And what's their profit? Well, this is the quantity here. It's going to cost them as much as it goes up to the average total cost. That's the average cost, this rectangle. And the revenue is 200 times 25. So this is the profits. Fair enough. So this shirt company A is actually producing these kinds of shirts right here. The nice aqua shirt with the yellow buttons. They don't produce these, but as a matter of fact, other companies are producing these. And you know what? These shirts aren't selling. Here's shirt company A making this aqua shirt or light blue shirt with yellow buttons and they're making profits. Here's company B, C, and D making these funny shirts. Guess what? Guess what these companies are going to do? That's right. Profits attract copy catters. That's right. These companies are going to start making these shirts. And what happens? That means there's more substitutes. And if there's more substitute companies making these kinds of shirts here, something happens to the demand curve for this shirt company. And the demand curve for this shirt company shifts to the left. That's the basic dynamic of a monopolistic competition drawing. You draw it like this, a bit flatter. If a company's making profits, it's going to attract copycatters. These guys are going to start making these shirts just like this with these nice aqua shirts, nice long sleeves. They're going to get their yellow buttons. They're going to start producing them like mad. And now when you go shirt shopping, guess what you can do? You can buy this shirt from a different company. So this demand curve shifts to the left. As a matter of fact, this diagram is going to get a little messy here. The demand curve shifts just to the point where it's actually touching the average or adjacent to the average total cost curve like this. And in the end, we get a new marginal revenue curve, something like this. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You come up here, et cetera, et cetera. And what happens is you end up with zero economic profits because the revenues are the same as the cost. Let's try drawing that again. OK, here's it in blown up view. Sorry about that. Here's the blown up view of this. You have the basic demand, marginal revenue, marginal cost, average total cost shirt company, and its price and quantity. And here's the deal. They're making profits, so this demand curve is going to shift to the left. We'll draw a new one in there now. And it shifts just, whoops, we'll draw a new one in there now. And it shifts just to this point here where it's kind of just tangent to the average total cost curve. That's demand two. 
Its new marginal revenue curve is going to somehow cross right there. You go up to here, you find the quantity that maximizes profits, we'll say 210. Now what does this mean? Well, look at this new situation. 210 times, we'll say, $20. How much does it cost to make these 210 shirts? You go up to the average total cost curve and it goes there. What are the revenues? Well, 210 times the demand curve times 20. See, this is the key. You end up with zero economic profits. So is anybody going to copycat anymore? No, your demand curve stays stationary. But you're no ninny. You want profits. So the thing is, is when somebody copycats you and your profits go away, you're going to do something about it. And this is the second phase of the dynamic. You differentiate your product. Product differentiation. Or you advertise. We'll talk about these two things next. The big thing here is copycatters, more substitutes, your demand curve shifts to the left if you're making a profit. In monopolistic competition number two, we will talk about product differentiation and advertising and the effects it might have on this market. See you there.